Dementia with Lewy bodies is characterized as a dementing syndrome experiencing cognitive impairment. So the patients early on will have difficulties with maybe thinking or planning. And then later there's three core features that neurologists look for specifically. So these are fluctuations and fluctuations in their thinking status. So we call it good days, bad days. And even within the same interview, a neurologist can experience this. The second one is Parkinsonism. So this is similar to what we see in Parkinson's disease. The patients will experience tremors. They'll have a stooped posture. They'll have a shuffling gait. <clears throat> and lastly, and quite an inconvenience for the patient, honestly, are visual hallucinations. So they'll actually see small children running around. These are often non-threatening, but you can imagine for the families, there's a lot of concern. Um, more recently, in the last criteria, the suggestive feature has been REM, rapid eye movement, REM behavior disorder. It was added as a suggestive feature, but the current study and my colleagues' study have really emphasized that this should be considered one of the core features. Because what it emphasizes is a currently stated suggestive feature, this rapid eye movement, REM behavior disorder that the patient experiences. And it could be something simple like muscle twitching to violent outburst. Basically, the patients are acting out their dreams. And the patients can experience this even 30 years prior to the dementing disorder, prior to the loss of the cognitive impact. And it couples it with the idea that neuroimaging may add a benefit combined with the core features, emphasizing that RBD actually overshadows the core features within dementia with Lewy bodies, because you really want to be able to accurately diagnose so that you can accurately treat the patients. So we are actually really uniquely situated here at the Mayo Clinic. We have a very nice collaboration across our sites and it brought together neuroimaging expertise, the neuropathology expertise, and the clinical side. So we were able to evaluate 75 patients, 40 of which lacked a history of REM behavior disorder. 35 actually had a history of REM behavior disorder. So currently it's one of the largest autopsy studies that has been evaluated in the science world. What we we're able to do is look across these two sets of cases, whether there were neuroimaging differences, and we found global differences. Now, interestingly, the cases who could be predicted to have dementia with Lewy bodies at autopsy, if you look at the brains of the cases who lacked REM behavior disorder, the types of changes we saw in their brain atrophy, basically their brain loss within the series of MRIs that they underwent, were much more like Alzheimer's disease. So the cases who lacked a history of REM behavior disorder exhibited patterns of Alzheimer's disease. And so this started making us think about whether it's the underlying Alzheimer's component that might be changing it more than the underlying disease that's associated with dementia with Lewy bodies, which is alpha-synuclein. We wanted to further the study by looking at the actual disease pathology. So we have this really fancy machine here at Mayo Clinic that actually can monitor and quantify the amount of disease in a brain region. So we scan our microscope slides and then we can develop algorithms that measure the amount of disease. And when you can do that, you can then compare between the groups. Now, once again, we wanted to test the hypothesis. What's different between REM behavior disorder patients that also could be predicted to have a dementia with Lewy bodies syndrome or the cases who lacked any history? So lacked any of the violent outbursts or any of the sleep associated differences. Once again, the cases who lacked a history had much more of the Alzheimer's changes, but there was no difference in the underlying synuclein, which is the protein that's associated with dementia with Lewy bodies. Of course, the study continues on, and probably one of the things that impacts currently the neurologists, the patients, is that we emphasize that monitoring REM behavior disorder, whether you have it or not, asking the right kinds of questions, it's actually more important than the three currently established core features within the dementia with Lewy body syndrome. So something that's only considered suggestive, REM behavior disorder, is 
five times more likely to be seen in a patient with dementia with Lewy bodies than the three core features, Parkinsonism, visual hallucinations, and fluctuations.